Hey guys, Russell Linville here. I'm a sports physical therapist and this is part of the Become a Better Human project. Today we're going over how to lunge. Last week we went over how to hinge, right? So we were able to learn how to keep a neutral spine, how to brace your core, get into a little bit of a hollow body position. We're going to play on that a little bit with our functional movements and transition that into a lunge. So what we'll do today is we're going to talk about a forward lunge, a backward lunge. Before all that we'll talk about just a, a regular split stance lunge. So what's a split stance? Well, it's exactly what the word implies. You get into a split stance position. This position, your base of support, you should feel like you can take off in any direction, right? My weight is in the ball of the front foot, uh, my heel's still contacting the ground, and then I'm kind of up on my toes on the back foot. My knee's slightly bent in the back leg, my hips are forward, so if I have someone coming at me, or I need to react quickly, or I need to jump, I can get you know, out of this position very quickly, I can even backpedal. I can turn and sprint. So you need to feel like you're in an athletic position. You need to feel well balanced. You need to feel like you can move quickly out of that position. So I want you to assume the split stance position. And for some, some of these people have never gotten uh, you know, back to lunging after say a knee surgery or rehabbing, or maybe you're trying to get you know, better per sports performance or you're just trying to get in better shape. The lunge is a great exercise to build your quad and glutes. So it's a really important movement pattern. What we're going to talk about today is how do you lunge properly, what does your ankle, knee, hip, and spine look like, and then what are some key areas that I look for when I'm teaching the lunge. So the first thing I want you to do is assume that split stance position, and I want you to drop down into a lunge. So it just looks like this. You're going to descend, and I'll send back up. Descend down, I'll send back up. Now I want you to do that on your own, and I want you to feel where you might have areas of tightness or tension. Do you feel more in your ankle? feel your knees wobbling back and forth? Do you feel like you've collapsed forward? How far over your toes is your knee going? These are all keys that I look for, so let's break it down a little bit. If you're in a split stance position, and you drop that back knee to the ground, which is usually our cue, more of drop the back knee to the ground rather than lunge forward, right? As you drop down, if you feel like your ankle is tight, you get stretched in the back of your calf, that probably means that your tibia can't translate too far forward past, you know, what we call a vertical shin position. So I need to work on ankle flexibility. If you're descending down and you feel like your knee is out of control, meaning it dives into, we call this a dynamic valgus position or an inward angulation, that's probably glute weakness or quad weakness. That's a little motor control impairment that you're not able to really control how your knee moves in that sagittal plane. As your knee's moving now in the frontal plane, we know the knee is more of a hinge joint, moves in the sagittal plane. How's your hip feel? Do you get to a point where you get down and you feel a pinch in your groin area? Or do you feel buttocks pain here? Might be getting a little bit of impingement, so we'll need to work on your hip. And then finally, what do you do with your spine? When you come down, do you get to a certain point and you have to hunch forward? And by that I mean, from the side view, do you angle forward when you get down? Probably lost some mobility, or again, it might be a motor control issue we need to work on. So once you revert back, if that's the case, to our neutral spine position, get the dowel out, right? Dowel behind your back. Try to keep that dowel nice and upright as you lunge down and up, keeping a neutral spine position. Now, split stance, great. Once you've gotten all those little keys and kinks worked out, it's a great exercise uh, to do, and you can start loading in that position. What I tell my people, right, we hold our dumbbells by our side, or kettlebells or whatever weight you want to carry and you drop down tap your back knee and right back up I tell my people to lock out their front knee lock out their back knee from a side view position if you're holding weight you can do this body weight until you get you know your uh, feet under you so to speak drop down touch your back knee and back up now if you look at the angle here my knee hip shoulders are one straight line down Right? I have a little bit of hip extension, so my torso, to compensate, has to do a little bit of a forward hinge, but I'm not extending back through and creating stress in my low back. I'm still creating that neutral spine position based on my hips. Brings up a good point. It's hard to overextend in a lunge, and if you do, you're going to feel really awkward. You're going to look at yourself in the mirror, you're going to look kind of weird, right? You're going to look like you're out of place, and uh, you're going to know that something's wrong. What the lunge does, since one hip's flexed, it automatically takes our spine and flexes it down. So that's one half of the battle in maintaining that neutral spine position. 
So that's a good thing. It helps protect you, but you just got to make sure that you're not overloading with weight or extending through your spine. So how do we change that split stance into a forward lunge position? Because it's a little more dynamic movement. Well, you're in the same position. Try to reverse it first, see what foot placement you need. So I want you to assume a split stance position first. Again, hips and pelvis is forward. Knees are forward, toes are forward. And so from this position, I know if I drop down, I'm gonna be in a good lunge position. So I'm just gonna step back towards my back foot. And now I know I'm in a good, I can assess what distance I need to go if I'm doing a forward lunge or a backwards lunge. So I go forward, my heel hits first. Again, I drop down here and right back up. What we don't want to see is that you go here and then your knee translate way over your shin and now you're in this you know, broken position where your heel pops up, you've lost and leaked some energy through this movement path. So, what we do a lot is single uh, forward lunges, alternating lunges, walking lunges, but you need to make sure that your foot's making contact, you have a stable base support, you're not moving into valgus, your hip's not impinging, you're not breaking your neutral spine. The same thing goes for a reverse lunge. Very similarly, that front leg is going to be your stable base as your back leg steps out. So you drop down and then you push through your buttocks to stand right back up. So what I want you to do is practice some of these movement patterns. If you've done the lunge before, right, try to reassess. See if you're doing it the way that I usually teach people to do it. And if you're not, find those areas that are a little sticky or tight or you might feel like they're a little bit, uh, you know, the mobility is lacking. If you feel like your knee or your body's moving all over the place, you might need some motor control exercises, some core stability training, or you might need to decrease the weight uh, until you get a little, or range of motion, right? Until you get a little more control throughout your movement pattern. And, uh, but try it. Try to do some walking lunges, try to do some reverse walking lunges, load up a split stance position, and um, see how you do. So this is Functional Friday, this is how to lunge over the course of this whole year, we're going to be talking about lunges a lot more, how to load it up, some variations, some carries. Next week, we're actually going to talk about how do you carry, what position do you need to get in with your scapula, your shoulder blade, how do you brace your core when you're carrying weight by your side or at this front rack position. And so the lunge is a great way to carry weight uh, as well for a workout or a functional movement. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is Russell Lindell, sports physical therapist, part of the Become a Better Human Project. I uh, appreciate it. Subscribe if you like these videos. Thank you.